Welcome to the first part of my video series on obesity. In the following lectures, we will go through the most common theories of obesity, the calories in, calories out model, the fattening effect of carbohydrates, insulin resistance, the hormonal and genetic cause of obesity. At the end of the third lecture, I will give you a brief overview of how these factors affect our body weight and how obesity can be treated efficiently. I know that many of you, and of course myself, have actually tried to lose weight by using the common advice, eat less, exercise more. This approach is based on the calories in, calories out model, that is the most widely accepted view among healthcare professionals today. Does this method work in the long run? Not really. At the end, the pounds always come back. I've been there before, I know exactly how disappointing it feels. The traditional calorie counting method turned out to be completely useless. Caloric intake and energy expenditure definitely play an important role in the regulation of our body weight. However, these two factors cannot give a full explanation to our original question, what causes obesity? In addition to calories, there are several other factors as well that determine if these calories will be burned up in lean tissues or they will be stored in the form of body fat. We will talk about this topic later. Let's start with the conventional calorie counting method. Eat less, exercise more. Basically, this is the general formula for weight loss today. The whole idea is based on the calories in, calories out model. If your energy intake is less than your energy expenditure, you will lose weight. Conversely, if you consume more calories than you expend, you will gain weight. Calorie counters refer to the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The law itself is correct, however, it has nothing to do with weight loss or weight gain. Let me tell you an exaggerated example. Let's say you cut back your food intake by 100 calories a day. Not a big deal. You won't even notice 100 calories. For example, one single chocolate chip cookie has more than 100 calories. We have all heard the saying, little things add up. With minimal effort, your annual energy intake will be reduced by 36,500 calories, and you will have managed to lose 10 pounds in the first year alone. This is just the beginning. Within a few years, you will be even slimmer than you were back in high school. In a couple of decades, your body will weigh virtually zero. Our body doesn't work that way. It seems like there is an invisible mechanism which controls our body weight. We need to introduce another new concept, thermostat effect. Our body desperately defends our preset weight. If you eat less, your body will switch into an energy saving mode. Your metabolism will slow down and you will end up burning fewer calories. The weight regulator keeps the same body weight in the long run, just like the thermostat regulates the temperature of your house. That's why calorie restrictive diets simply don't work in the long run. If you eat less, your metabolism will slow down and you will be sluggish and hungry all day long. You cannot just lose weight by simply eating less. Let's talk about another common myth. Calorie counters often say that a calorie is a calorie. If that were the case, it wouldn't really make a difference whether you ate 100 calories of sugar or 100 calories of cabbage. Both would have the same effect on your weight. This is totally wrong. The human body doesn't work that way. Although both foods contain 100 calories, they have absolutely different effects on our metabolism. Sugar is a very energy dense food. 100 calories are packed into a small amount of 25 grams, which is the equivalent of two tablespoons. Shortly after ingestion, the sugar will cause a sudden spike in blood glucose level, followed by an insulin rush. Insulin is an anabolic hormone and is the main driving force behind obesity. Acting like a squirrel or a hamster, insulin works hard to store every possible food item for later use. After the initial blood sugar peak, however, blood glucose levels will drop faster than normal and you will be even hungrier than before. As a result, you will end up eating more food. Cabbage, on the other hand, 
is not an energy dense food. 400 grams, which is about half an entire cabbage, contains the same amount of energy as two tablespoons of sugar. Besides calories, cabbage also contains fiber and a lot of water. By slowing down nutrient absorption, fibers prevent enormous fluctuations in blood sugar levels. Since there are no sharp blood sugar spikes, insulin levels also remain stable. Fewer nutrients will be stored as fat. As is seen in the previous example, it definitely makes a difference what source the energy comes from. We saw that not all calories are created equal. Some of them can make you obese, while others have just a minimal effect on your weight. The calories in, calories out model can give you a satisfying answer to our most important question, what causes obesity? If you found this video interesting, check out the link below. In the following three-part lecture series entitled What Causes Obesity, I will give you a brief overview on the causes and treatment of obesity. Thank you for watching.